Hi, hello, here is Rafaele and behind me is my instrument called Knurl. And in this video, I would like to share with you how do I program my instrument. There will be quite some technical terms, mostly related to the programming language I use, which is called Super Collider. But I hope this video will be useful for a general audience. Um, the computer and the programming uh, software I will use is called Bella. Bella is a platform and uh, the link for its website is in the description below. And that's uh, the platform I use to receive, control and transmit sound and data. Because KNU is an electroacoustic instrument, which means that there is an electronic system connected to an acoustic sound and body, its practice is very related to, let's say, two different mindsets. And that also reflects how I program the instrument. One mindset is connected to the way how you organize, you compose, you categorize sounds, and you map the sounds. And another mindset is very connected to performing and playing the instrument. Uh, because there is, uh, in every string, uh, when I touch every string, I can play and cue events, let's say. I have the feeling with Knu, and that's a very big feature of my instrument, I believe, uh, that this distance between these two worlds gets less evident, and I find this very unique. So, here comes the funny part. What you see on the right side of the screen is a program called Touch OSC that will allow us to, to not only uh, see me changing buttons, but also understanding exactly what am I doing. Here, when I really uh, like rotate these faders on the frame part of my instrument, I am mapping my instrument. And um, you can see in the first block, and in this first fader, I'm changing these names. This is called, in my uh, KNU world, uh, the modes of performance. Because on KNU, I believe that I can uh, categorize and organize uh, specific sounds uh, to be playing a specific behavior or way. So every of these names, they are basically a list of sounds that I can perform with. So there is the synth mode, there's the recording, there is, um, sorry, there's the event, effect. But for now we can try maybe recording. That's very simple. And uh, on the second fader or in the second block that you see moving, it's actually uh, the channels. So you can see I'm changing channel one, channel three, channel 4, and uh, that's where I'm going to store a sound. Now, how am I going to play this sound? The third fader is connected to my action. So, in this case, I want to play. I don't want to stop or plan a sound or do nothing. I want to play. And the last, the fourth fader, or this last block of the right upper part of the screen, it's called controller. Here I select a specific agent for my sound, or a way to control my sound. In the case of recording now, I will demonstrate with a fader. So, if I play now this very low sound, you will see that uh, I just recorded a sound and I am controlling with the last faders of my instrument. You can see it right here. But let's say maybe in during the performance I don't want that. Maybe I want to change the way I control the sound. I can do that by changing the, this uh, fourth fader, and I can choose, for example, to control my sound by uh, the volume and the pitch that I play, or maybe. I don't want that. Maybe I want to do the opposite. When I play loud, then the sound uh, will be soft, and if I don't play, then it will be loud. Or maybe I can control the sound by the touch of the string. So select, selecting parameters by the touch of each string. Or the bow, which is something very unique. Um, so I can change parameters by 
for example, the frequency I change by this axis, the volume I can change by this axis. And the filter, I believe, is with this axis. So you, I'm always controlling three variables in every sound on Knurl. I call them frequency, volume and filter. But in some specific so uh, sound mo uh, modes of performance, which is, for example, in this case, the recording mode, I am actually, uh, this one actually means the start position. So I recorded a sound of four seconds and I'm just choosing where, what is the start position of my loop or I control the volume with the second variable or I control the um, uh, duration of this loop. So it would be the la less duration here, max duration or the opposite. Um, this was a very short explanation, but it's important to understand what I need to program inside of my instrument. The first uh, file when I open the patch of Knurl is a bunch of files. The first ones are more related to mapping the system or the conf making the settings. In the case of Knurl, I unfortunately need to use quite a bigger block size. Uh, Bella is really this, this Mac, my controller I use is really good for uh, low latency, but because I use a lot of uh, samples and sounds, uh, I'm always struggling to find the right amount for uh, known latency and CPU usage. So here is the, the safe uh, block size number I found for my instrument until now. Um, yeah, besides that, of course, there is uh, all these other files that are uh, uploaded in the main patch. Uh, and they are, these ones are mostly related to how, map, how the mapping of the strings uh, works or the faders. Uh, these files here are actually basically files where I upload a bunch of synth devs. Now I'm starting to get into the technical terms. But let's say, for example, I can open the, this file, the effect mode. Or the event mode, and then you can see there is a, a, a synth def. Very simple. Um, you, see, you can see that I use a lot of uh, lean lins. That is my way to map uh, a specific condition I gave to myself. Uh, to f to f in order to find a safe space for every single synth def, I always send a value between 0 and 1. And in the synth def, I can translate this number to everything I find safe or nicer or that sounds nice. Um, yeah, and besides these files, these folders, I have also these ones that are more related to how the instrument operates. So there is this file called sender that is basically a synth dev that is receiving the information from the sensor, from the strings, from the bow, and it's all sending to another OSC definition that is called this file perform. Um, and also the file run. Run is a as a OSC definition. I can show you a little bit here. That is mostly related to to uh, like let's say a system that ne needs to be constantly updated, like a loop, let's say. And uh, here is where I usually program the variables. So when I changing all these these variables in the sounds. Run is the place where these variables, the vari these variables are all the time updated. Perform is usually the place where I am really um, queuing sounds to stop or play. So I have all these conditions that uh, will first read uh, where the, the state of the instrument is, and then it will queue an event and a sound or a synth def in a more technical term. Um, did I forgot something? I think design is a file mostly related to 
uh, writing conditions to my instrument, so that is more related to facilitate the process in the uh, perform uh, OSC definition. So just for the technical people, um, just to recap, uh, this one is a synth dev um, and it's basically sending information and you can see here it's sending with send reply uh, and the design and run and perform they are OSC definitions you can see here on the top and they only receive information from the sender I send specifically to that port or to this OSC definition and to finish the last folders are related to connect connection interactivity my instrument has this feature that allows audiences and collaborators to engage uh, with uh, its sounds, interact with its uh, behavior, and uh, these files are mostly related to that, so it's receiving OSC data from other instruments or people or interfaces, but it's also sending some stuff. So uh, here in this case it's sending to this LED system, the OLED screen I have in my instrument, it's uh, the, the, so the program you are seeing the right screen that you can see now changing. It's the StatueYC, which is, um, it belongs to this file, let's say. Without this file, I'm not able to see what's happening on the Touch OIC program. Um, yeah, and to finish, um, this audio system of Canary is still quite complex, and I'm not sure if I am there right now to, to say, wow, I really made it. Um, because the more sounds, I, the more effects and, and sounds from the, the strings of the instrument I add, the more, um, how do I say, the, 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 more, the louder it gets. So I need a sort of mixing system to equalize the outputs, the, ge the general outputs. And the way I do that, I have a synth called main out, and that works as a mixer. And I am always, um, let's say, di um, dividing by 0 0.5 to reduce the gain when I add a new sound. Um, sorry if this was too technical. I hope this video was very useful, and I hope also it can inspire people to think different about making instruments and um, and maybe hopefully it inspire other people to play my instrument in a close future. Thank you for watching and let me know your questions and suggestions on the comments below.